Rampant reports of bed bugs in Paris have prompted a global scare as similar stories emerge from different corners of the world. So what exactly are bed bugs? And are we looking at a global resurgence? And what can be done to better stem its spread? Welcome to Issues and Insiders. Today we delve into the presence of a rather unwelcome guest this season, bedbugs. For more on this, I have Professor Chow Yang Lee at the University of California, Riverside, live on the line. Professor Lee, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Sunny. I also have Konswa with us. Soa, it's good to have you here. Hello, Sunny. All right, then, Professor Lee, let's begin with some general information about bedbugs. What are they? How dangerous are they? And how do they spread? Sure. Uh, bed bugs are small, indoor obligate, uh, blood sucking, uh, wingless insect pests that you can find, you know, in the house, and they are normally about the size of an apple seed. Uh, all stages, as well as sexes of bed bugs, will suck blood from human, and they may cause uh, inflamed spots and, of course, itchiness. Some people have no reaction at all towards bed bug bites, while others uh, may experience allergic reaction uh, and also severe itching uh, that could actually last uh, from you know, a week up to a few weeks. Now, generally, there are, uh, overall, there are two species of bed bugs that are important, uh, what we call the common bed bugs and also the tropical bed bugs. So the common bed bugs are commonly found in the temperate region uh, while the tropical bed bugs are distributed in the uh, tropical region. But because our indoor living environment now are becoming increasingly similar, uh, you know, with the use of air condition and also heater, so we are now seeing tropical bed bugs too, you know, in temperate regions, uh, such as in Central Europe, you know, in Norway, you know, in Italy, France, and more recently, actually, in Korea. And the good news is, unlike mosquito and ticks, you know, bed bugs do not transmit any form of human diseases. So, you know, other than discomfort because of the itchiness from bed bug bites, their bites do not really cause any serious consequences. But there are situations where the affected people actually scratch, you know, scratches the area that, you know, rigorously until it causes wound and potentially secondary infection. So that became a problem. And in other situation, you know, serious infestation of bed bugs uh, may also lead to mental illness. So bed bugs normally spread when they hitchhike uh, through clothing, luggages, you know, uh, furniture, bedding material of an infested location, whether it's in the form of live insects or eggs. Right, I see. And as mentioned by Professor Lee Soa, what can you tell us about the cases of bed bugs here in Korea? Well, bed bug infections have been making, not infections, infestations, that is, have been making headlines uh, in many countries around the world. Now, here in Korea, it's not a huge issue at this point, but it does seem uh, that the number of uh, bed bugs that have been cited does has uh, increased here in Korea as well. Uh, two concerning um, occurrences we had recently were at a dormitory and sauna. First, on October 19th, a bed bug report uh, was made at a dormitory at Kemyong University in Daegu. A student reportedly has been bitten by a bed bug or bed bugs. And on October 13th, at a public sauna in Incheon, there was also a report. There was actually a video by a YouTuber that went viral uh, that showed the bed bugs in that specific sauna as well. And there were more reports made by individuals individuals as well, such as at Koshi ones, which are small one room dwellings here in Korea. Now, by region, um, confirmations were made in the capital, Seoul, Gyeonggi-do province, Chungcheong-do province, so in, in, almost in uh, all corners of the country. And as of October 31st, 18 out of 25 municipalities in Seoul have confirmed bed bug cases. And an official from a quarantine company said the Yongsan-gu area is in particular a 
detected. Adding bed bugs have been found in dormitories, jimjilbangs, which are similar to saunas, and restaurants, uh, which some of them even had to shut down uh, due to these cases. Now, the recent sightings um, suggest a resurgence of the bed bugs, as Korea was deemed a bed bug free country for decades after strong eradication measures in the 1970s due to the extensive use of DDT pesticides. So they were common um, in the past, then had not been seen, discovered until 2006, and then recently seemed to have grown in numbers. Uh, although it's not been concluded, the influx of foreigners after COVID-19 uh, may be the reason for the emergence here in the country. Uh, in fact, the dormitory in Tegu that I mentioned earlier, it uh, had been used by a student from Britain. Right, I see. And before we delve further into the reasons behind the presence of bedbugs, Professor Lee, are we looking at a global resurgence of bedbugs? I mean, what can you share with us about the situation there in the U.S.? Sure. Uh, yes, uh, over the last uh, you know, two decades, there has been a global resurgence of bedbugs. Uh, it actually started in the Europe and also in the U.K., and then subsequently in the U.S. and South America. And the last 10 years, we are now seeing, you know, a surge in cases in Asia. Now, now the resurgence, it's widespread in the U.S. You know, they can be found almost, you know, in every sector of the society, uh, ranging from homes to hotels and public accommodations to office buildings, healthcare centers, uh, libraries, transportation, which includes airplanes, cruise ships, trains, buses, and even in poultry farms. But the worst infestation, I would say, in the U.S. is actually in low income and also public housing. And these are the people who are this, the disadvantaged uh, you know, community and that do not have any means uh, to come out with the money to take care of the big bucks problem. So I would say that big bucks affected the socially disadvantaged group the most here in the US. So we should actually think big bucks as a community problem rather than an individual problem. Right, indeed. And before we talk about ways to deal with that, then, Soa, what is the latest with regard to the bed bug situation in France as well as elsewhere in Europe? Well, there is quite a bed bug panic in Europe, especially in France, uh, where a bed bug infestation swept in the capital Paris in the past weeks. And these uh, bugs are being observed crawling around public transportation, like subway seats, in hotels, restaurants, movie theaters, and so on. Several schools had to be shut down over infestations in France and the French government is working strenuously to contain the spread of the insects, especially with the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics coming up. Authorities, however, have also been calling for calm as social media is being swamped with bug videos going viral, only adding to residents' concerns. And those concerns have also grown in the UK, where bed bugs have been cited increasingly this year too especially with public transport in London being the real source of concern, according to its mayor, Sadiq Khan, who vowed to not let the bug uh, plague London like it has Paris. Uh, so what they're doing is, for instance, daily infections of seats on TFL or transport for London are being carried out. And uh, Germany is another country where fears are existent, especially with the high number of visitors or immigrants from other places of the world. Uh, bed bugs do do have increased across the country there as well. Uh, however, recently Germany's Pest Control Association said there is no reason for a sudden surge as well as no reason for the hype uh, that's seen in neighboring France, saying the increase we're seeing comes naturally, again with more people traveling after the pandemic. Right, I see. And then Professor Lee, how do you explain this latest resurgence in bed bugs in different corners of the globe? So, uh, you know, this has to go back to history. So allow me to talk a little bit about the reason why we are seeing this resurgence. So a long time ago, uh, bed bugs is actually a main problem, you know, affecting human. And, uh, you know, based on literature, you can find that, you know, in the 1700, 1800, bed bugs is actually quite a major issue uh, in homes. But with the introduction of DDT in the 40s, and along with other insecticides, this seems to take care of the problem already. 
So by late 1960s, you know, bed bugs are no longer a major problem in many countries. But it, it remains an issue in Africa. You know, in, uh, in West Africa, you can actually find two species of bed bugs uh, in homes. So around the same time, um, you know, DDT was used uh, for indoor treatment against malaria vector uh, in Africa. So use of DDT uh, subsequently followed by the use of pyrethroids uh, insecticide. This has inadvertently select for insecticide resistance uh, in bed bugs that are found in African homes. And what happened is when we fast forward 30 years down the road, that is now, these insects then could have spread unintentionally uh, from Africa, you know, through all these modern advances in transportation system to Europe, and then subsequently from there, it spread to different parts of the world. And what is interesting is, if you collect any population of bed bugs that we can find today, you know, uh, in different countries, almost so resistance to DDT and pyrethroids. And, and one of the biggest challenges, pyrethroids are so commonly used in the insecticide that we use against bed bugs. And that's why we are seeing that in a lot of situations, you know, when insecticide are being used, they are less effective. So what happened is in 2020, when the pandemic came, it stopped tourism and travel, uh, you know, very much. And, and we are, of course, seeing a decrease in bed bug incidents because there are fewer people that actually travel. That means that when fewer people travel, fewer people get bitten. And of course, fewer people complain. And without these blood meals uh, for the bed bugs, the bed bugs are also not, reproduce, not reproducing as quickly. But now, travels has resumed, and of course, you know, uh, there are more people now traveling. Bed bugs have, you know, uh, able to take their blood meal, and of course, they could grow pretty quickly, and that's why we are seeing and hearing more of these incidents now. Right, I see. And given that background, Sua, how are authorities here in the country trying to tackle this spread of bed bugs, which, as Professor Lee mentioned, are resistant to most of the insecticides that we use against them? Right. Uh, following the appearance of the bed bugs at numerous shared facilities, uh, government officials got together to find ways to deal with the situation. Earlier this week on Tuesday, the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, the Health, Education, Environment, Tourism and Labor Ministry held a meeting and discussed pest control measures. One of those measures was implemented on Thursday, so just yesterday, where extra preventive measures in subways were conducted. And that especially due to concerns over a box sitting in seats that are covered with fabric material. Uh, and the warm temperatures uh, due to the cooler temperatures outside uh, could also lead to a further spread due to the heating in the subways. And uh, also the concern is because uh, many of those bed bugs have been found in subways uh, in Europe. So this is why uh, the government has been implementing this uh, in public transportation. Also, since November 1st, so Wednesday, the Overseas Infectious Disease Reporting Center at Incheon International Airport is giving information on prevention and management measures to passengers as well as companies that import goods, especially with a focus on goods imported from France and the UK. Meanwhile, after the 2000s, the government has not been compiling statistics on bed bugs in Korea, not only due to their virtual eradication, uh, but also because they are, uh, as Professor Lee mentioned, not categorized as disease carriers. So uh, despite the recent emergencies, it looks like we're not going to have any epidemiological investigation due to the recent situation as for now. Right, I see. Then Professor Lee, what more do you suppose can be done to better stem the spread of the these bed bugs that are resistant to current insecticides? So, uh, so for this, first of all, I think everyone needs to play their role. Uh, now, if you accidentally get a bed bug infestation, first of all, do not worry. But what you need to do is you need to act right away. So normally in an infestation, you would find, you would see blood stain produced by the bed bugs. And you may also see some of these tiny egg cases or the shed skin of the bed bug. 
they are pretty small, but it's visible to naked eyes. So to tackle the infestation, you need to do it when the infestation is still very low. Vacuuming actually is a very good approach to reduce the number uh, and try to identify where they are investing. You know, in particularly for like, for example, bed and mattresses, uh, furniture, uh, sofa set, for example, are primary location in the house where they are normally found. Now, heat treatment is extremely effective, uh, but they can be costly because of the amount of time involved. Uh, and also how in also depends on the how extensive the infestation is. Now they have been also use of desiccant dust, which is highly effective as well, although it may take uh, a few days before you can actually see uh, the effect. But whatever it is, it is best to seek uh, help from professional, uh, especially professional pest management uh, operator. Uh, DIYs are fine, you know, when the infestation is new, but it will become very challenging once the infestation has been established. For example, what you actually uh, see, you know, for example, in the house, you know, where there is a flu-blown infestation uh, all over the house. So if you want to get rid of your infested mattresses, for example, make sure you mark it properly that it has bed bugs before putting it outside the house or at the dumping ground, because otherwise, someone may just pick it up and then end up in another person's home and the infestation would continue. Now, if you come back from a trip and you discovered that you have been bitten by bed bugs, first of all, uh, do not bring your luggage into the house if possible. Take out all the clothes, put it in the washing machine and make sure you wash it uh, with hot water and then dry them in the dryer. Okay, so this would kill any of the live insects as, egg, as well as eggs that are in your clothes. And then for your luggage, it would be best to use one of those, you know, garment steamer and then just slowly run through every inch of the luggage. This would also kill the eggs as well as any insects uh, that potentially has hitchhiked with your luggage. Right, so heat would work wonders against these bed bugs then. And staying with that, Swa, I understand there are a few pundits who've shared a few more tips on dealing with bed bugs, right? Right, it's not like we're really helpless against the battle uh, against these uh, bed bugs. There are a number of basic tips that you can find online that are shared, but also with the issue having become an issue here in Korea, the government has actually published a guideline on bed bug prevention and response um, on the KDCA website late last month that might uh, be a little bit of a repetition from what we just heard from Professor Lee, but uh, let me uh, give you the advices by the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, which says if you've got bitten by a bed bug, first wash the part with water and soap and consult with a doctor or a pharmacist on how to treat the bite according to symptoms. And symptoms can show up a maximum of 10 days after the bite. Also, check whether your house or the facility you are at has bed bugs. Um, look for them at uh, the bed mattresses, bed frames, sofas, carpets, cupboards, bed material, and look for excretion of the bugs as well, or a bad smell like that of mold. And uh, what do you do if you do find the bed bugs? Uh, the KDCA recommends a mix of physical and chemical methods for effective extermination. So physically, that would be using high temperature steam, again, uh, vacuum cleaning of bed, mattress, sofa, and other furniture, and also make sure to seal the bag well and throw it out. And uh, bed covers, curtains, clothing that has been affected by the bugs should be disinfected with dryers. And now to the chemical part. After having checked the habitat of the bed bugs, treat them with pesticides that have been approved by the Environment Ministry. But do avoid materials like mattresses or that you have actually direct contact with. Uh, and also um, make sure to check the habitat place for new emergencies and uh, Again, uh, Professor Lee did mention this again, but um, uh, if you've been exposed to bed bugs during travel, disinfect your travel items, uh, make sure you don't bring them back to Korea, back to the country, and also ask for professional help. That's also always an option. I think that's what I would actually do if I do see any bed bugs in my home. Right, me too, professional help, of course. <laughs> Professor Lee, what more can you tell us about the symptoms 
that follow a bed bug, bed bug bite, we, apart from being itchy, what should be done also if you have perhaps a fever after a bite, do you think? No, normally, we, we would not get a fever. It's just you know, discomfort, I would say. Uh, you would probably see some inflamed spots and itchiness are usually followed afterwards. Um, but after a bite, if you are one of those more you know, uh, sensitive individual who actually would show the symptom, uh, what happens is you can get the itchiness that will appear as fast as you know, uh, within six hours uh, to a day. Some people actually would get you know, the itchiness after two days and it could last uh, sometimes up to two weeks. Uh, but, you know, when you have those symptoms, uh, you know, first wash it uh, with warm water, and then you may want to apply some medication in order to uh, stop or to ease the itchiness. Um, I would not recommend you to scratch it because, you know, intense scratching could lead to secondary infection. But in some serious circumstances, for example, if you get an allergic reaction, which is pretty rare, but some people do show, uh, you know, uh, allergic reaction. So you should immediately seek uh, medical attention. Right, of course. And if your house is infested, you need to get professional help, of course. Absolutely. Right then, Professor Lee, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts today. And so here in the you. studio, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Sonia, and have a bed bug free weekend. Hopefully, right. So, for those of our viewers, do take care against the bed bugs out there. Have a great weekend. See you next Monday.